Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Oracle Modern Customer Experience 2017. Brought to you by Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals and noise, talk to the influencers, the experts, uh, thought leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, anyone we can that has uh, data we'll share with you. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris, my co-host for the two days here. Our next guest is Jay Baer from Convince and Convert. Uh, Cube alumni, great guy, super uh, influential, knows this marketing stuff. Perfect guest to summarize and kind of package up what the hell modern CX means here at the Oracle Show. Welcome back. Good, Good to see you see guys. You. Welcome. Yeah, so you were uh, hosting the CMO Summit that was yeah. going on in parallel. They had yeah. the Marquis Awards, which is their awards Big time. dinner. 11th annual Marquis Awards, man. It's like a thing. It's amazing, it looked like the Golden Globes. See, it was beautiful <laughs> this year, I mean it was like legit. Is that the one with the O on the top? Uh, the, and they've got the, and they delivered an award with a drone, it was a really, it was a great night. It was yeah, a lot of fun. It, it, awesome stuff. So give us the package here, I mean, what's going on? I mean, tease, tease out the, the, the story here. Yeah, I mean, I think the story is twofold. One, uh, Oracle's got an interesting take on, on the marketing software space because there really are trying to connect it between the overall customer experience initiative and then marketing as a piece of that. So this event in particular, the modern customer experience event, has tracks, almost full conferences, for marketing, for customer service, for sales, and for commerce, right? So all four of those are the verticals underneath this umbrella, and that's a really unusual kind of a conference setup, but I think it reflects sort of where Oracle's head is at from a thought leadership standpoint, that like, look, maybe, maybe we're going to get to a point where marketing and customer service really are kind of the same thing. Maybe we're going to get to the point where sales and marketing really are kind of the same thing. We're not there yet, by any stretch of the imagination, but I think we all feel that convergence coming, and my world and the, the, the marketing side, CMOs are starting to get more and more responsibility inside organizations, and so if that happens, maybe we do need to start to align the software as well. So it's, a, it's an interesting uh, take on the market, uh, yeah. and I think it's uh, sort of prescient for where we're going to head. It's interesting you mention of all those different silos or different departments or different functions in a digital end-to-end -end fabric. Yeah. The experiences are all about the customer, that's one person. They're going to have different experiences at any given time yeah. on that life cycle or product spectrum or solution spectrum. Yep. So the CMO has to take responsibility of that. Well, I, I feel like somebody has to be responsible for it. Mark Hurd said this in, uh, in one of his remarks over the, the course of the show, uh, CEO of Oracle said, look, there's, there, there is no data department, right? Everybody has to be responsible for data, uh, but somebody has to figure out what the ins and, and the outs are. And, and maybe that's the CMO, maybe it's a CXO. I, I don't think we've fully baked that cake yet, yeah. but we're going to get to have to get to the point where the sort of single uh, record of truth about yeah. the customer and their customer journey has to exist, uh, and somebody's have to figure out how to wire all those together. So we're it, getting there. It was so funny, I was joking, um, not here on, on the queue, but you know, in the hallways about the United Airlines snafu, and I'm yeah. like, to me, as a kind of a developer mindset, is like, software should have solved that problem. They never should have been overbooked to begin with. Yeah. So if you think about just those, these things where the reality of a consumer at any given time is based upon their situation. Yep. I need customer support, I need this, I need that. It's, so everyone's got to be ready, customer ready, <laughs> with data. Yep, they it's can't all about say, relevancy. Look, relevancy is the killer app, that's it, right? And, 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 and relevancy is created uh, by technology and with people, people who actually know how to put that technology into yeah. practice in a way that the customers actually care about. It's one of the other things that Mark said. He said, look, here's, here's the issue. It's not about data, nor is it about cloud. It's not about any of that. It's about taking that data and creating understanding out of it, but he has said a really interesting thing. He said, what we have to do is push those understandings out to the front lines where somebody on the front lines can do something with it that actually yeah. benefits a customer. And, and I think it's a really smart point because so often right now we're talking about, oh, we've got these data stores and we've got DMPs and we've got all these things. That's great, but until that gets manifested at the front lines, who cares? You just got a big pile of numbers. We just had Katrina on from the commerce side, yeah. and uh, it was funny. She was making a, a retail comment saying, look at they don't care about the tech. They don't care about blockchain and all the speeds and feeds. They want to, they have to do a transaction in the, in the speak of the consumer. Yep. And the language of the customer is not technology. No, they don't care. They just solve my, solve my problem, right? Just, just solve my problem. I don't care how you solve it, what sort of magic you have behind the scenes. If I want a sweater, I want this sweater and I want it right now. Okay, Jay, so share, share with the folks watching and us 
conversation hallways you've had. Yeah. That's always the yeah. best. Yeah. Because you had a chance, obviously you had the big stage doing yeah. the hosting thing, but also you get approached a lot and you, people bend your yeah. ear a lot. Yeah. What's happening? You know what's been an interesting uh, theme this week is we've made such great advances on the technology side. And I think we're starting to bump up against, okay, well now we've got to make some organizational changes for that technology to actually flourish. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of conversations this week with influencers, with CMOs, with attendees about, I really want to do this and I really want to sort of bring sales and marketing together or commerce and sales, et cetera, but our org chart doesn't support that. The way our company thinks, the way our people are aligned does not support this, this convergence and so, I think we're at an inflection yeah. point where we're going to have to like break apart some silos, yeah. and not, not data silos, but operational, like what is your job, and who manages you, mm -hmm. and what is your bonus based on? You know, there's a lot of, of, uh, of legacy structures, especially at the enterprise, that do not uh, really facilitate the kind of cross-departmental uh, circumstances that we're looking for. So a lot of people are like, oh wow, we're going to have to do some robust organizational change, and that ain't easy. That, and somebody's going to have to drive that, right? And your yeah, marketing yeah. practitioners, which is my world, they can't, they can't drive that. That's, that's got to come from up here somewhere, so. Yeah, and we'll also see. people got to be ready for the change. Yeah. No one likes yeah. change. Yeah. But we were talking about this yesterday called Ad, the Agile process, that yep. development being applied to marketing. Well oh, we're seeing all the time. So many marketing teams now are, are using Agile and, and daily scrum and stand-ups and all those kind of things, uh, as opposed to, to Waterfall, which everybody's used forever. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, and that's something that we're seeing, and Roland Smart kind of pointed out, he had a book, got a signed copy, Peter and I. But this is interesting, if you go agile, that's to your point, it's, you just can't read the book, you got to have a commit oh. to it, you, the organizational impact is agile, so. One yeah. of the things we had in the CMO Summit, uh, we had like 125, 150 CMOs from all around the world, and one of the things we talked about in that session yesterday was, geez, we need to try and start taking people, or hiring people out of a software development uh, world, people who, who have agile experience, and put them as PMs on a marketing team, right? Which is going to put that, that group of people who have the agile background in even greater demand, because they won't just be uh, you, you know, doing tech roles for project management, but also marketing project management, yeah. and sort of teaching everybody how agile works. I think it's really interesting. But they've been doing that for a while. Yeah. I mean, the, the agile, agile started in software development, but moved broader than that when, uh, when it went to the web. No question, but a lot of these CMOs do not have those type of skills on their team today. Uh, they're, they're still using a waterfall Or they don't method. recognize that they have the skills, because most of them uh, yeah, will have responsibility yeah. Yeah. for websites and that's website right. development, yep. so it's, it's that they don't, again, they're not goes thinking back, about it, in it terms goes of back to the issue of do they really web appreciate Web versus marketing. Yeah, yeah it's, they, they may not, they, they probably have it somewhere, they just somewhere. don't appreciate yeah. it and elevate it. Yeah, and it's siloed even within the marketing it's team. It's siloed within the marketing team. Yeah. So there's going to be, I mean, these are these are consequential changes. We'll see oh. the degree to which it really requires a whole bunch of organizational stuff. But at the end of the day, it's it's you're right. It's a very very important thing. What, what were some of the other things the CMOs were talking about, uh, other than just organizational? Well, sk uh, actual other sort of baseline skills, right? So um, it wasn't that long ago that your social media teams and content marketing teams it was manifestly a written job, right? You 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 made things that were rooted in copy, uh, and now we talked a lot about like like you have to have like a full video team. Uh, you know, on on your marketing uh, org chart because you know the, the coin of the realm now is is video content and and while companies are are, are getting there, uh, it's still a struggle for a lot. Because we make sure we have our agency do this, we get somebody else to do it. They're like, we, now I got to have all these people. I got a video editors and yeah. camera crew. It's and expensive. Yeah, you know, of course it is. Yeah, so not everybody can be the cube. <laughs> well, they're trying. No, but I think video is becoming down to the camera level, and you see Facebook with VR and AR, certainly the glam and the sex appeal to that. Yep. And then you got Docker containers, and you got software development apps, yep. so I call that the app culture. You got the glam apps, and then you got cloud. Right? Yep. So those things are going on. So, so you know, are the marketing departments looking to fully integrate agency-like stuff in-house, or is the agencies picking up that? I mean, what's your... What's your uh, take on the landscape of, from video and the, some of these services? It depends on how real time they're thinking about video, right? We're starting to see Facebook Live in a public relations circumstance, right? You saw when Crayola uh, announced the, the death of the blue crayon or whatever it was a few weeks ago. I mean, they did a press release on it, but the real impetus for that announcement uh, was a Facebook Live video, right? Which, which puts 
Facebook and live video essentially as your new PR apparatus. That's really interesting. So in those kind of circumstances, the question mm -hmm. is, okay, do we do that with the agency? Is it easier to do it in-house? Uh, I think ultimately, my, my advice would be you have to have it in both places, right? You have yeah. to be able to do at least some things in-house because you've got to be able to turn it quickly, and then maybe for things you've got more of a lead time, you bring yeah. your agency. One of the things we're seeing, and just commenting while we're on this great subject suite to our business as well, um, is content is hard. Good yeah. original content is what we strive for as, as Silicon Angle and Wikibon and theCUBE, um, is something that we're committed to serving the audience. At the same time, we collaborate with marketers in this new native way, yep. so the, the challenging I see, in, I see in this marketing cloud is content is a great piece of data. Right. Okay. Content is data. Content is data. It's or, or, and it also helps you get more data because there's a lot of information exchange. So right. a lot of companies that I see that fail on the content marketing side, they don't punch it in the red zone. The ball's on the one yard line. All they got to do is get over the goal line and that's good content and they yep. try to fake it. And well, they don't have authentic content. Another way of and saying they, that, another way of saying that, like, John. Guys, you blew it at the one yard line. Yep. Yeah, another way of saying that is that the historically uh, agencies have driven the notion of production value and they have driven the notion of production value to, ex to make the content as expensive as possible because that's how they make their money. Yeah. When we're talking about is when we introduce a CX orientation into this mix, yep. now we're talking about is what does the customer need in context? Yep. How can video serve that need? It's going to lead to a very, very, a potentially well, very, well, very no, different no, you set bring of up a good, You bring up a good yep. point. I want to get Jay's reaction on this because he sees it a lot too. Context is everything, so at the end of the day, what you what, what is engaging? You can't buy engagement. It's got to be good. What good serves the customer? If the is customer, yeah. and that is defined by the customer. You can't. There's, exactly. no, there's no silver bullet. There's no engagement bullet. Yeah. Right? You can't, hey, it's I just bought some, engagement. Sometimes you can argue <laughs> that the customer values uh, a lower fidelity content execution because it has a, a greater uh, perceived authenticity. Well, right? you may not know this, Jay. Uh, just to, I'm going to promote us for a second. A piece of video that's highly produced in the tech industry generates attention for a minute and a half to a minute yep. 45 seconds. Yep. The cube can keep attention for 12 or 13 minutes. Sure, right. Why? Right. Now, if, if we were, if we were, people if we were a digital it's, agency, it's, uh, I, would say the, would I would say the hosts, of obviously. Yeah, the host, the, the conversation, the, the fact that it's it, relevancy. Informs it comes back to relevancy. The, yeah, yeah. It informs the customer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what increasing, I think these guys have to think about. So in many respects, I'll, we'll go back to your organization question, I want to test you on this. Is it, in many respects, that the CMO must heal thyself first? Oh, by uh, starting to acknowledge that we have to focus on the customer absolutely. and not creative and absolutely. not the agency and, yep. and rejigger things so that yep. we can in fact focus on the customer and not the agency's needs for us to spend more. Uh, it was, there was one of the great uh, conversations at the CMO Summit was this, was this point that like, look, we have all this technology now and we have all these opportunities and, and darn it, all we're doing is finding out other ways to send people a coupon. Like isn't there, some, so isn't there something else that we could use this technology for. And what if we just flipped this script, right, and said, what do customers genuinely want, which is knowable and certainly inferable uh, today in a way that has never been historically. Mm -hmm. Why don't we use that data to give them what they want, when they want it, how they want it, instead of constantly trying to push them so harder. Focus on value and not being annoying. I mean, I wrote a whole <laughs> book about it, Lou, and, 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 and Well, uh, your key point you know, there is they can infer and they can actually get yeah. signals. Right. That we have never been there before. Right. Chatter signals. But let's use them, let's use them for, for good, not evil, yes. right? I think yeah, is, yeah. The, is the subtext yeah, there. Yeah, don't, don't jam a coupon. But, down but as, as Mark said, you know, it's hard because um, CEOs are under tremendous pressure uh, to raise top line uh, in an environment that, that is not conducive to that. You're going to have to take share. The, the economy mm -hmm. is not growing so fast that you can just show up and, and, and grow your company. And so CEOs have tons of, of pressure. They're then dropping that pressure on the CMO that says, okay, you need to grow top, top line revenue. So the CMO says, well, we've got all this technology. I guess we'll just send out more offers. We'll have a stronger call to action. And as, a, as opposed to using this information, the inferences, the data, to, to be more customer focused, I think, in some cases, we're being less customer focused, which, if anything, is short-sighted and, and at worst is a cry and shame. And well, so the solution there is to use the data to craft relevant things at the right time yeah. Look, to the right and, people. And it will work, but it requires two things that a lot of organizations simply don't have. Time and courage, right? It requires yeah. time and courage to purposely push less hard, right? Because mm -hmm. you know it will pay off eventually, but, but you've got to buy into that, and that ain't easy always, and well, sometimes it's not even your decision. Well, what we don't want is we don't want to automate and accelerate bad practices. Right. And at the end of the day, what CMOs are learning 
you know, I think, I wonder if this, was, if this conversation came out yesterday is, geez, maybe marketing really isn't that good. <laughs> maybe, maybe we have to learn ourselves from what this technology is telling us, what the data is telling us, and start dramatically altering the way we think about marketing, the role the marketing plays, the techniques we use, mm -hmm. the tactics we use, that will lead to organizational changes, blah, blah, blah. And, it, and, 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 and I'm wondering, are they, did you get a yeah. sense out of the session that they are in <laughs> fact stepping back and saying, we got to look in the mirror about Absolutely. some of this stuff. Absolutely, Absolutely. And, and, and I thought it was remarkable, uh, considering he runs this company, Mark Hurd uh, came in and did a little, a little Q&A at the CMO Summit, and he said, <laughs> well, this is a guy who runs Oracle, right? Who's putting this whole thing together. Uh, is selling you know, tons of, of marketing software and he comes in and says, look guys, I'm not even sure if what we're doing here is right because we've got all this technology, uh, we have been doing this for a long time, we've got all these smart people and, and, and still, what's our conversion rate, 1%? Like we've got the greatest technology in the history of the world, we supposedly know all this about customer experience and customer journey mapping and our conversion rate is still 1%. Maybe something is fundamentally broken with how we think about marketing. And I thought for, for somebody in that role to come in and just drop that on a group of CMOs, I was like, whoa. I think he's right. I mean, he's I think totally he's right. right. I mean, but, it's a, but to have a CEO of a company like this just walk in and say, here's what I think. Well, I, I think like, people have, what? I think, I mean, this is a question for you and, 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 and I'll, I'll answer it by saying, you know, we try to observe progressive CMOs as a leading indicator yeah. of, to the comment you mentioned earlier, which is flip things upside down and see what happens. Yep. What are you seeing for those progressive CMOs that have the courage to say, yeah. you know what, we're going to flip things upside down yeah. and apply the technology and rethink it in a way that's yeah. different. What are they doing? One of the markers, uh, the markers that we see on the consulting side of my business is uh, CMOs who are thinking about retention first. Not only from a practical execution layer, but, but even from a strategic layer. Like what if we just pulled back on the steering wheel here a little bit and said, how can we make sure that everybody who's already given us money continues to give us money and more so, and, and essentially really turn the marketing focus from, from a net new customer model to a customer retention and, and customer growth model. Start there, right? Start with your current customers and then use that, those insights gained and then do a better job with customer acquisition. And so yeah. as, as customer service and, and marketing in particular start to converge mostly because of online. Online customer service is, is very brand driven and, and uh, more like marketing. So as those two things are converging, uh, we're seeing smart CMOs say, well, what, what, if we, what if we change the way we look at this and took care of our own first, learned those lessons, and then applied them outwardly? I think that's a really strong marking signal. It's for, a great for starting CMOs. point. Absolutely. And it's almost risk-free from a progressive standpoint. It's not always risk-free in inside the well, organization. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's harder to get new guinea pig customers to like, see what works, yep. go to your existing customers and say, we have data to work yeah. with. But right. wouldn't you also say that the very nature of digital, which is moving the value proposition from an intrinsic statement of the yep. values in the product and caveat emptor towards a utility orientation with the values and the use of it, yep. and we want to sustain use of it, we're moving more to a service to do that, and digital helps us to do that, that the risk of taking your approach goes down, I because at the end agree. of the day, yeah. when you're doing a service orientation, you have to retain the customer, because the customer's you would constantly think, got yeah. an opportunity <laughs> yeah. to abandon it. Dude, yes, I mean, the, the ability to bail out is, is very, very easy these days, I completely agree. Uh, but, but what I find is that it makes sense to us, right? It makes sense to us on the cube, yeah. but in the real world, it's not. Not yeah. everybody's drinking drinking that uh, that punch yet. And why? So, I don't know. We'll see inhibitor. I, I, Sounds I, like courage. I, I, it is definitely courage is one of them because you're essentially saying, look, I've been taught to do marketing one way for 40 years or 20 years. Yeah, I'm leaning on my email marketing all yeah, day long. Yeah, I'm just going to keep pressing send. It's easy. There's almost no net cost. Um, so there's there's that, and and also just the the pressure from above. I think uh, mm -hmm. from from the CEO to, to grow top line net new customer revenue. I think that's certainly yeah. part of it. Uh, and some of it is, is uh, I think we went back to you earlier about org chart and, and skills and resources. There's a heck of a lot more people out there uh, at every level of a marketing organization who are trained in customer yeah. acquisition more so than customer retention. I mean, yeah. how many MBAs are there in customer retention? Zero. <laughs> uh, how many MBAs are there in, in, in marketing and, and sales? A lot of them in Amazon. 500,000. Yeah. A lot of them in Amazon. That's right, but they were I trained, mean, they, were trained they were trained there. They were trained there. They they didn't come in like that, right? Yeah. So they, they trained them up. Jay, great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks. Great insight as usual. And I think you're right on the money. I think the theme that I would uh, just say for this show, I agree with you, is that if you look at Oracle, you look at IBM, you look at what Amazon's doing, uh, Microsoft, in some way, maybe a little bit, but those three, 
data is at the center of the value proposition. Yep. And, and Oracle means to an end. clearly is saying to the marketers, at least marketers, we want to say digital, it's end to end. Look, if you use data, it's good for you. This is the new direction. If you think data driven, CMO, yeah. that seems to be the right strategy in my mind. So <laughs> the I think best, the best quote in the CMO summit, uh, and, and you, you guys need a, a cube bumper sticker that you can manufacture, was data is the new bacon. And I was like, oh, I love that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the best, right? I'm like, I'm, I uh, love it. Who doesn't love yeah, bacon? Exactly. Jay, great to see you. Uh, see you real quick, what's up with you? Give us a quick update on, on, on your opportunities, what you're doing uh, these days. Great. Uh, running around the country doing fantastic events, just like you guys are working on a brand new content marketing masterclass for uh, advanced marketers on how to take their content marketing strategy to the next level. That launches in a couple of weeks. Uh, continue to do, you know, we're doing four or five uh, podcasts a week and a new video show called Jay Today where I do uh, real short snippets, three minutes uh, a day. Uh, jaytoday.tv if you want to subscribe to that. Beautiful. Good Jay Bear, great on theCUBE, great uh, thought leader, great practitioner, and just a great share on the net. Check him out. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris here at Oracle Marketing CX. More live coverage after this short break. Uh -huh.